That Naturopathic Podcast. TNP. Hello there. Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm Dr. Cara Denisio. And I'm Dr. David Miller, and we hear your frustrations. This show is for you. This show is for you if you're feeling like your current healthcare strategy is not getting to the root cause or the underlying reasons for your health. This show is for you if you've been told that you're fine, but you definitely don't feel very well. This show is for you if you're walking out of your doctor's office with one, two, three, four, or even five medications without any mention of diet, lifestyle, or a long-term game plan. This show is for you if you've got several specialists taking care of you, but no one is really putting it all together. This show is for you if you believe that health should be part of health care. These problems have solutions. We know it. Our patients know it. And we want you to know it. Naturopathic medicine is the solution that you need to know about. Okay, welcome to another episode of That Naturopathic Podcast. I'm thrilled again to have uh, Dr. Verna on for our Elder Series. Uh, Verna, we're talking about something really, really important to the way you practice and the way I practice. I'd love to be as good as you, but uh, it's a big part of what I do too. So what are we going to talk about today? Today we're going to talk about touch, being yes. touch, giving touch, therapeutically and receiving it therapeutically or receiving it in any any way uh, touch yeah that's what we're going to talk about about why it's important to the body you live in why is touch important super and- important now especially right because we've gone everything virtual and it's like it's it's sort of encouraged to become even less toward uh you know less yes. uh towards touch so you know, if, yeah. do you have any comments on that that won't get us I into do. trouble <laughs> I do, yeah. So we have five senses, I believe. Taste, touch, sound. Taste, touch, sound, hearing, and smell. And so touch is really, really important to know where you are in space. But it's also very energetic. And We've all had this happen. You're in the house. It's the middle of winter. We're just in this right now. And you don't have the humidity quite right in your house. And when you go to reach for the doorknob, you get a shock. Mm -hmm. We have an energy field. The doorknob has an energy field. Our energy fields meet up, which can be startling when you're not expecting it. When it's a doorknob. But when it's your baby or your loved one, or an old friend you haven't seen in six years and you meet on the street, what do you want to do? You want to hug. Mm-hmm. And um, what is that about? It's it's not only the physical feeling of some other pressure upon your body beside your own hand, but there's an energy exchange. Mm-hmm. And we know that from the door, doorknob experience. People said, oh, well, no, you're imagining it. No, no, it's a shock. I mean, you feel it. So there's a lot about, it's a lot that we're exchanging in touch and the intention behind the touch, loving, considerate, angry, um, being, brutalizing someone physically. These all can embed in the electromagnetic field of the, of the body, of the skin. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have a pet, like a dog or a horse, Um, they love to be touched. Cats, they love to be touched. And so we love to be touched. Love is, is, I'm not just using it as a fluffy adjective. It is, it is a form of loving. And when you have that intention and your friend puts their hand on your back and says, hi, David, you can go, oh, that that felt really good. That was, that was funny because you don't always know why, but it does feel good, right? And it it feels especially good these days because you don't get it as much. Yeah, you don't get it as much. We're we're touch deprived. I always I often think as a culture we're bliss deprived. When I say to my clients, patients, they tell me their story. I say, "Oh, I know one thing that's happening to you. You're bliss deprived." And they sit there and they go, "You're right." And I say, "Yeah, yeah." What do you mean by that? Whatever is bliss for them, they're, they're, they're negative or, they're, or they're, they're, there's no joy in their life. 
uh, mm -hmm. or they don't perceive it as joyful. You can be standing in the sunshine on a beach in Hawaii uh, drinking a pina colada and not notice that it's joyful, you know, depends mm -hmm. where you're in, in your own state. But, but if you're in the sunshine or you see the sun, I, I can't think of one human being I know that doesn't go, Oh, there's, there's the sun. Mm -hmm. It's in, it's, uh, it's instinctive. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's touch and it might be just being touched by water. You know, some people really like going swimming, especially in salt water. And they, they just say, Oh, that felt so good on my skin. Yeah. So that's a form of touch. And as a practitioner, uh, touch is very important because it can tell you a lot. But but our skin, for example, is our biggest organ. And it's developed from the same layer as the nervous system. Yeah. And um, skin is the first point of entry into our body and the last point of exit, be it your mouth and your rectum or 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 be it... Uh, perhaps my belief is that as your soul or spirit enters the body and exits the body, you know, there's, there's a lot about feeling the physicality, the kinesthetic experience of touch. So it also defines our, our physical boundaries, like where your, where your skin is, the next point is your outside your body. So if we didn't have our skin, we'd just be oozing out everywhere. Mm -hmm. Skin is really important boundary. It's a it's that it it needs to be resilient and have a certain pliability and it's kind of wear and tear, you know. Like your car frame, except we have more pliability than a car frame, but it can really protect us mm -hmm. from all kinds of things. So it also can excrete things like sweat, uh, smelly sweat, good sweat, whatever sweat. Um, and then when it starts getting really dry or dandruffy, it's sometimes excreting things or cradle cap on a baby. What is that? What do you think cradle caps about, David? You can't put me on the spot like that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can't put me on the spot. No, I mean, uh, to me, the skin is always trying to express whatever can't get out in through right. other sort of emotions, yeah. like we talked about previously on yeah, another episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I surprised you. I shouldn't have surprised you. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the skin defends, uh, defends us, um, but it also caresses us. It just in oneself, but also... The touch of your skin on, on someone, it can, it can have a personal meaning, but it also can have a therapeutic meaning. Mm -hmm. So the touch is very, very important. And there's all kinds of things about touch I'm going to talk about today. There's so many uh, different levels, right? Like I, I feel like there's even a, even just a basic level where there's not uh, a ton behind it, maybe in terms of intention, but, uh, but maybe there is intention a lot of the time, but I think of some of my elderly patients who also go to massage therapist and maybe they, they're a widow or whatever, and they're on their own. They just don't get touched very often. I wonder if there's just something even to that, like just getting touched by a massage therapist or, or whatever. I just think any touch must be better than none at times. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there are many, I don't know that there are many more single people in the world, but I've had many women say to me, I have to pay to be touched, but I still need to be touched, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, our, our skin is how people kind of recognizes our body shape, you know, the, the sack we live in, you know, the it's, meat sack, the meat sack. <laughs> we recognize each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so there's this electromagnetic energy thing about touch and uh, David and we have things in our profession where you can take and set a probe on an acupuncture point and, and it can measure the energy in the point. There's things like that, that, uh, that are used by touch, but, um, yeah, I've so, even used those point finders before. They're kind of neat, the yeah. acupuncture point finders, yeah. and they just yeah. measure yeah. the resistance of the yeah. tissue, right? Yeah. So what happens when you go to a health care practitioner 
because you want help or you're delivering the help. People come and say, oh, it hurts here or it always itches here. They just come and point. And I feel that practitioners need the ability to consider many, 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 many things kind of all at once when they're looking at this hurts here or there's a rash here. And then we ask all our kind of doctory questions like when did it start and is there a pattern and is it only when you eat bananas? And then we're taught to do that. And those are all good questions. But what's stopping the resolution of whatever the symptom is? And in order to assess that, in my opinion, as a practitioner, you need to touch it. And what will the skin tell you? Do the, does this person have a temperature in their body that's more or less the same all over? Notwithstanding the fact they just came in from the cold and their feet are cold. But no, I just mean, is they're warm everywhere, but their, their, their tissue in their low back is cold or too mm-hmm. hot. So you think about temperature. Then you pick, think about the texture of the skin. Are they dehydrated? Are they, do they have that crepe papery skin? I think I talked about that last You've week. You've talked about it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's important. So is there, is there an oil deficiency? Um, is it puffy? Is there lack of a lymph drainage? Um, is there scar tissue there? Like when you roll the skin, um, and I, do you think people will know what I mean by rolling the skin? I think know? so. Yeah. I, yeah. Not a lot of people are out there rolling their own cigarettes. I don't see them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> or other things. So the tobacco, but, <laughs> but um, you know, skin rolling is a great thing to do just to, to find adhesions. Because that can really, like um, in carpal tunnel problems, uh, that you can roll and roll and roll the skin. And then you'll find often an area or many areas where there, there's adhesions. And once you get those out of the way, the movement becomes more functional, for example. Microcirculation, you can have an area which fires wrong, like a group of um, muscles. The one arm will fire correctly. And people say, my rotator cuff doesn't move as well as I would like it to. And you can roll the skin and palpate all the muscles. And this is where anatomy becomes important. Mm -hmm. And it's okay not to know. But when you know you don't know, you go to somewhere like anatomyzone.com and you look at the rotator cuff and they show you animated rotations. It's really great. It's not three. It is three dimensional. It's not on a page in a book. That's a great. There's some amazing anatomy tools now. Yeah, like amazing really? and super helpful. I feel like in our education, we could spend more time on it. If, if I had to be honest, uh, I think we could spend more time on it. It's such a core thing. Yeah. So, so you want to feel the tissue and, um, it takes a lot of practice. That's why we call our work practice. And I would say every, if not every day, every week, I learn something new by touching. Mm-hmm. Because I, I have a question. Well, what is that? What is that? What is that? Mm-hmm. Why is that there? Where's the adhesion or where's the puffiness coming from? Or why does that hurt in a certain way, but one inch away from them it doesn't hurt at all, or it hurts in a different way to the person? Um, some people, for example, don't know they're hurting. Well, that can be true in so many ways, can it? So yeah. feet, feet are a good example. So people, I have people who sometimes come, sometimes come to me just for orthotics because of the kind of orthotics I use. They're functional. They're not like a hockey puck to put under your foot. You know, right. they, they help you move correctly. And um, so I've had uh, quite a number of women, I would say over 60, and they've had various jobs and many children and all kinds of things. And then I say, no, I want to feel your feet. I want to see how all the joints work. And um, they don't realize they're in pain till I, I know I kind of nudge a spot that I know is not working well. And I'll say, what does that feel like? Oh, that hurts. I didn't know that hurt. Meanwhile, when you watch them walk, they're not rolling through their foot, you know, like this. Mm -hmm. They're kind of stumping along like a penguin walk a bit. And that that makes you more imbalanced. Uh, You're you're kind of waddling versus striding and using your muscles. But the, the whole body's mapped out on the foot. We know that through reflexology. And then there's lots of acupuncture points there that mean a lot of things to people who have that knowledge 
But rubbing your feet can be one of the best things you can do for yourself if you can reach them. Mm -hmm. Some people are stiff or or obese or whatever. They don't rub their feet. But I think if we taught children as, you know, like we teach them to cut their nails, hopefully, if we just did a little lesson on how to rub your feet and rub your hands and, uh, you know, kind of just shake, rub your muscles, but just do the feet. That would be wonderful if they just learned that as part of their health hygiene. Yeah. And I imagine from your chiro training and everything too, like the, the, the amount of uh, nervous system feedback you're getting from those areas too, are just, it's just, it's, they're so uh, mapped. They're large, largely mapped out in the brain, right? So yeah, you must yeah. be getting some other benefit too. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So in the 1980s, when nobody talked about brain injuries, but I would have people come in and I'm thinking their brain is hurt, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're very untouchable. They can't hardly tolerate a voice above this, you know, or light. Yes. And so I would begin by finding a way in. That's what I would call it. And it was through touch. And um, I would do the feet very gently, very gently. And I might do the hands. I just find out what was acceptable to that person's body at that time. Sometimes their ears. Like you can very gently rub the ears out because the whole body's mapped on the ear. Uh, we know that from what we call auricular therapy, but it came out of Indochina in the 50s when the French left after they colonized it. Then they took it back to France and developed it more. So there's a lot of um, information in the ear. I've used it. Uh, it's it's incredible uh, what you can do with it. I don't use it much anymore, but I found it fascinating and actually clinically really, really useful. Crazy. And the, what, the other way it's useful is... Say you're at a family do and somebody's got something or other and they come, David, you have to come. <laughs> and, and you think, okay, here we are. We're all in our Sunday best. What am I going to do? They're nauseous. Let's say they're nauseous. Mm -hmm. So you just take that point on their ear and you just say, sit down and breathe for a minute. I'm just going to rub this. It'll hurt a bit. And then when you're done, they'll go, it's gone. I, and you say, what do you say, David? You say, that's what I do. <laughs> That's what I say. That's what I do. As opposed to, oh, Dave's just do it. What does he do? He does some weird thing. <laughs> and then you say, That's what I do. Well, it's fascinating because you can do you could do some really interesting real time stuff with it. Like you could do because uh, you're working distally. Say you're working with a musculoskeletal thing like the shoulder. You can do the shoulder point in the ear, yes. and then they instantly <laughs> their shoulder starts moving better. And it's yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, there's a bit of wonder and amazement, I guess, with our, with our profession and jobs, even though we do it, I think part of us is kind of like a little kid going, this is amazing. <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah. I do that all the time. I, I sometimes think, wow, and patients go, <laughs> patient crying goes, what? <laughs> I said, I have to figure out how that worked. <laughs> well, I don't quite say it that bluntly because it would scare them probably, but you know, there's things you can learn when you're listening Go down to the foot and rub it. Like if you can't get into the body another way, go to the foot. Mm -hmm. Unless the foot's the foot's the thing that hurts. But if you're trying to work on a brain injury, and I use things like color therapy, I use very non-invasive things, but you can go down to the foot. Mm -hmm. You can also use points on the foot to help birthing start and acupuncture points around the ankles. You know, to get you're just finding a way in, right? Like I've I've used the analogy. My analogies aren't as beautiful as yours. I've realized this already, but I, I use the analogy of like a pry bar. Sometimes you just have to find that place where you can get in, and then it opens up everything. And it's, I mean, it's not as beautiful as what you're talking about, but it's the same idea, right? You're finding Absolutely. a place to get Absolutely. in there and open things up. Yes, yes, and touch is a way. And mm -hmm. sometimes the touch, as you well know, David, is just put your hands on their belly, and wait a moment till you. Have a sense that they're okay with your hands there. Don't move them. Just put them there and say, I'm just going to put my hands here. And I'm sure your hands are warm. My hands are always warm because I use them so much. And I just said, I'm just um, checking out what's going on in your belly here. I'm trained to do that. And I tell people that I'm trained to feel the belly and feel the organs from the outside to a certain point. I'm not a cat mm -hmm. scan. And, um, and so I'm just going to just gently feel 
what this is like. And you can tell me to stop at any time. Even if it's not painful, you just don't want my hands there anymore. That's good too. You need mm-hmm. to just, just keep communicating with me. But in the meantime, just feel where my hands are. Just feel that. I don't, I don't say, use the word think about it. I just, just be where my hands are. Cause they're there. They're participating in consciousness or what other word you would use. That's the word I use. It might not be scientific enough, but in consciousness. Yeah, more a receptive, a receptive sort of play. You don't have to do anything, right? You're just sort of like receiving the information and, and, and that's it. That's what I, I tell people too. Don't, don't overthink it. Just, you know, feel yeah. whatever you feel. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And they can talk about it or not. Yeah. Uh, um, and I would say when they don't know how to say it, because usually there's some disharmonic stasis thing going on with kids, especially I say, does it feel oogie? They go, yeah. I say, yeah, it's one of my best scientific words. Oogie. <laughs> People yeah. know what that is. Or squirrely. Yeah. Does it feel squirrely? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It sounds have a feel like even even the words to them sometimes uh, have a feeling. That, yeah. Yeah. I, I I don't know. I can't think of any that I use. But yeah, I, I I'm always struggling to let people say whatever word they want because it's mm-hmm. hard to sometimes give it a word and like oogie and things like that can come out. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's very good. Those are called automatopoeia, right? Like the word yeah. applesauce is what it's sounds like what it is yeah or pickle pickle sounds like what it is always i'm always fascinated by that stuff anyway um so there's all kinds of um ways to touch i mean just putting your hand on a friend's back like i got your back is the message you know some tragedy Mm -hmm. has occurred i've got your back i'm i'm right here i'm right here beside you i'm not going anywhere Sometimes I say those things out loud, but sometimes I'm just stand near them, not in them <laughs> and just, you know, I'm, I often touch them, but sometimes they can't hardly stand the sensation of touch because it brings them back into their pain of sorrow. Right? Well, I thought of you last, last week I had a, I had a patient uh, and when I, she's had a motor vehicle accident and a, um, you know, brain injury and, and vision associated issues with that. So she's in a bit of a rough place. She's young. She, she's, you know, was very vital of working out and being healthy and everything. So bodies experience some trauma, but when I put my hands on, it's like the, it's like, it sucked me in. It's like, and, and uh, she, it's, I thought of you because it was, it was the opposite of what you're saying there. It actually, the body said, here, come touch, touch here. It's all good. Like it actually like felt like it, brought me in a little bit and these things are hard to communicate over a podcast or whatever without doing them right 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 that's that's i have i have the course on touch it's called beyond palpation and it sounds like whoa or touch i couldn't ever figure out how to label this course but it is a great experience course it's just a day you know because everybody's was busy but now we're just coveted <laughs> Coveted. I'm not coveted. I'm coveted. But anyway, uh, so we have all, you know, all of these uh, membranes. And sometimes when you touch people, you kind of get an idea of their energy. And when I first tried to even think about this as a practitioner, I thought, I don't know. I don't know. Like it was just, there was no reference point in my cultural or intellectual upbringing. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have it. But One day I remember feeling a person who I was somewhat acquainted with and I put my hands on their body and there was like nobody home. I thought I could, I can almost feel like my hand could go right through them. Mm -hmm. It was an energy thing. And, uh, and that was almost scary. I thought it wasn't like sucking you in to say, touch me. It was like, there was just nothing. No, no, nothingness. Mm Mm-hmm. And also I find um, culturally, say, a hung, um, Hungarian is a really different dynamic culture or West Indian or Colombian or there's a difference in their in how the energy of their body feels as a group. Then there, Then there's a whole other way to think about it. When you touch their body, is it kind of one continuous connected something? When you feel their feet 
and you feel their head, um, is that the same feeling? Now, that takes years to develop. But I had a very interesting experience about 10 years ago. A client who I'd seen early in my career, probably 30 years prior to that, lived out west in Vancouver somewhere. And she came into town to visit another acquaintance we knew, but she had a migraine coming off the plane. Could she come by? I said, sure, sure. Just come and I'll see what I can do. So she was used to seeing an osteopath. So I did osteopathic work. And as soon as I had her heads, her head in my hands, my doctor brain remembered the energy of her body. I thought, oh, this is so-and-so. Not my personality. I actually knew it was her. Yeah. Okay. That's mad skill level. But is, is this, is this related to that thing when like I work with some chirals that are great uh, too, and they, and they, they have this understanding of uh, when the person comes in again, they can say, ah, it feels more like this or, ah, you've changed. It's interesting because you can't really chart that very well. It's more like a a knowing in your hands or whatever. Is that sort of similar, but like, it's similar. It's similar, but but it's um, also, it's kind of like hearing somebody's voice you haven't heard for a long time. And they it's not like they were your brother, or your sister, or somebody you really knew well. And you hear their voice and you think, I know that voice. Yeah. And then you remember, oh, that was my grade three uh, hopscotch buddy or like whatever, whatever. Yeah. But you know... You know it. And there's so many energetic things that we have that people, many people would say as an evidence-based science. Mm -hmm. But science is really just having the ability to observe and take in and uh, determine to the best of your ability what is what. And it is true to have really good basic education, but the, the ability to observe and to have the question What is that? You don't always have to know the answer right away because in the meantime, you can be using touch to do other things like what does their belly feel like? A swamp? Or Mm -hmm. is it got dynamic? Or is it all gushy, lymphy? Like what's it doing in there? Mm -hmm. And, um, are you know, are they chewing their food and they're going to the bathroom? Because a lot of people say, oh, I I can't do that as well as you, you, you can. I said, yeah, well, one would hope after... 42 years, I <laughs> but it's something I said, but there's things that you're, you're unknowingly passionate about in your work. Follow that, follow your curiosity, mm-hmm. follow. Oh, I really, really like to examine people's feet. Can you tell? I like to examine people's feet. <laughs> um, other people would maybe never want to do that. Other people. Um, I always wanted to be able to read people's skulls, you know, with all the bumps, there's this whole Chinese theory about that but i don't know it i just it makes me curious but there's Um, these microcosms all over right so the the concept is is you know you got the feet with reflexology you got the ears with auricular there's always a way in Mm -hmm. there's always a way in always a way in and for that person a a safe way in especially if they've been brain injured or damaged or um abused especially sexually uh, mm-hmm. and, and so on and so on. Um, you know, what, uh, have you had people who are, were really averse to any touch at all? Like, can yes. you think the hardest cases where they were like, uh, very, very averse to yes. touch and what did you do? As little as possible, not, not looking like it is as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a lot of talking or not, they come in and they have this thing, but they want it fixed instantly and it's not from a place of ego and pushiness they're just scared they're feeling their body they're in their body because the pain's going are you listening to me Mm -hmm. you know and um uh i do something and then i try and think of something they can do to help themselves by touch just rubbing your belly in a clockwise direction softly just Mm -hmm. do that maybe rub your feet not for everyone um humming so i have people hum um <clears throat> and i learned this from a personal experience in the 90s i i uh had a kind of a near life experience but anyways in recover and when i was recovering near life do you mean near death yeah yeah okay. but it was near life too <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um 
I found that humming, in retrospect, it really helped my nervous system because what had happened, one of the things that happened with what had happened was that there, I didn't sleep for a very long time because my nervous system was on uh, flight. And, mm-hmm. and so I started to hum nonsensically like a two or three year old like this. That's how kids do it. They just, I just say, hum, use this vibration of your own voice in your own body. And if it feels okay to do this, go to where the pain is or where the stress is. Or what do you mean by that? Go to where it is with the humming. Send the yeah, vibration. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? It's because so, some of this stuff is difficult for, for yes. people to understand. Yes, I'm say, glad for you it. asking me. So if I if you put your hands on the top of your head and you make a deep sound like this, you can't feel it. But if you were to feel your belly, you would feel the vibration. But if I, I'm not a singer. You'll find out in a second. But if I go. <laughs> I can feel that. I can feel my fingers on my skull feeling Mm -hmm. that. So the higher the sound, the higher it is in your body. And the lower the sound, like in your boots, Mm -hmm. you will feel, you will actually feel it. So I teach people this. I have them put their hand on my upper upper chest and I'll go. "Mm -hmm." I said, did you feel that? Mm -hmm." Did you feel your fingers kind of almost vibrate yeah i said so that's the sound for that part so then like where it it resonates where it resonates it's vibrating your own body and isn't it interesting that every indigenous culture that lasted for any amount of time had some form of sounding and we see it in our canadian indigenous people we 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 see it in every indigenous culture and it might be chanting it could be all what they're doing and very many uh historic um judeo-christian they have a way of doing that but -hmm. sometimes the sounding is like oh you know it's it's not like our my sounding in my culture but there is a, a way of making noise through your body. Yeah, the concept, the concept is the same. The details are yeah. differ. Yeah. yeah. So since everybody has a form but, of But doing Verna, that, wait, before you go on, like this, that sounds like, so you're doing this a long time ago. This is in the eighties or whatever you yeah. were talking about a long time ago. It sounds like, uh, I think some people are, are using this for sort of vagal, uh, yes. you know, vagal tone. Is, uh, yes. is there some overlap here or like it, is that a different perspective Absolutely. of the same kind of no, thing? No, I was just doing it because I knew I was in big trouble and I needed not to check out. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I used sound. And what was interesting to me after a while, I was seemingly singing some tune. And then I realized it was all the tunes I learned in Sunday school as a little girl. But I didn't realize it while I was doing it. But singing Sunday school songs when I was a little girl out in the countryside on the farm area was the only music we really had. So Mm -hmm. that's where I went to, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you, when, sorry, when you get done, I want to talk about uh, touch as a language. So sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but when, when I want to talk about touch as a language, I'd love to hear what your perspective is on that when you're done this part. Sorry, I interrupted there. (laughs) No, that's okay. I, I'm I'm trying to figure out whether I was finished that or not. What do you think? Am I finished that part? Maybe I sensed that, but you yeah. could go on. That's the problem. You could go on. It's a, <laughs> it's a good thing, but... Yeah. Well, I really encourage people to make sounds. Sing in the car, yeah. but also uh, make uh, nature sounds or um, uh, go to the top of a big hill and scream if that's what's going to work for you that day. Mm -hmm. I think Um, a lot of people have said that's been therapeutic, just screaming. Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on that? Any just cathartic? Well, it really gets their liver chi moving. Mm -hmm. Nothing like stuck liver chi, anger, bitterness, rage, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of where we are right now. (laughs) Yeah, for Uh, sure. So, so if people don't know what that means, like when you say uh, get your liver chi moving, you mean like, what would traditionally be called maybe in like Greek medicine or whatever, like bilious constitution, yeah, that sort of yeah. acting bilious. Yeah. Is that a raging person with a red face? Liver. Liver. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
just and 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 not too long ago there was a significant person in the uh, country just south to us who looked like that all the time <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so um the language of touch yeah i wanted i i wanted to draw you into and normally i just want you to sort of guide us your yeah. with your yeah. uh stories and everything no. but i i wanted to talk about it as a as a language where there's, uh, there's, it's almost like communication. So there's a few different things. There's the person communicating, then there's the uh, person receiving it. And, and so the ability of, of the body to give, uh, you know, a signal in terms of like feelings and, yes. and yes. that's one thing. So you, you've got some people who are very in touch, I guess, with their, how their body feels. And then you have others uh, who aren't okay. as much. So you have less data to work with in a, in a sense. Um, but the body doesn't lie. It sort of tells you everything. If you are someone like you or how I aspire to be, which is where I understand the language of the body, the language of touch, because uh, I, another time I thought of you this week, you know, I don't think about you all the time, but that this, this other time was, um, I was touching, I was just following because with my technique, I just sort of follow where the fascial tightness yeah, pulls me. Yeah. I just listen and then I follow. And then I, right. I touched her, uh, just under the diaphragm where the, where the, the stomach attaches to the mm-hmm. diaphragm. And she, she said, actually, that's where everything started. And, and she didn't remember the story exactly how it's, but then when I touched it, it yes. reminded me sometimes because we talked about that yes. in passing in another episode where then it reminded her. So the yes. body told me, not her. Yes. So anyway, yeah, I call that, that preamble. Oh, by, I call that "Oh, by the way." Yeah, yeah. I'm going to write a book called "Oh, by the way." I think. <laughs> and I've done that to people I go to for care, and I go, "Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you this part of the story." And they and they say, "Yeah, you, yeah, I needed to know that." People, <laughs> we we absent, we disassociate to survive. So when you bring friendly touch, safe touch, for example, someone's lying on their back and you just have your hands under their head, just holding their head very gently. And what I've learned to do is just what you did. I listen and I wait before I apply any pressure of any kind. And then I begin very gently touching like you would your eyeball, like through your eyelid. You're just touching. That amount of pressure. That amount of pressure. Yeah. And so the first signal is to watch their breath and see if it changes and is deepened or slowed if it was fast or a sigh or they go, oh, what do you make of a sigh? It's the uh, switch into the um, parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. Parasympathetic. That means relaxing. They're relaxing. It's safe to breathe out and not just run or whatever well, you know what i struggle with Varen? what about the sigh of a of liver cheese stagnation so what how do you differentiate because that's kind of like a that that sort yeah. of frustrated irritability yeah. how do you yeah. what do you look at the difference between those i, I know what you mean because i because uh, i know the sigh you're talking about but there's yeah. also the sigh of yeah. what we learn about in yeah. chinese medicine right yeah so uh i might say something like Oh, that was a good thing to let go of or that. What can you, what did you feel when you, when that happened? How did you feel? I just asked them, Mm -hmm. you go, they might say, I I don't know. Is it relieving? Oh yeah. It's kind of, I said, well, just keep breathing. Keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Let's see where it goes. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't overly label things till while they're experiencing something. I don't want to take them back into their head, their mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and then I I. T- so you feel first, think later, like yes. Burrell. You yeah. th- feel first, think later. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Yeah. So you're trying to. Then I begin to touch the head. Now, with a newborn baby, when you touch them, and you have to kind of only use half your fingers because they're just new. And and there's something going on, especially if there's a birthing twist in the head. And you just put your hands under their head. And they will exactly push. They'll extend and rotate and push into your hand exactly where they want to be touched. You don't have to do anything. You just supply the knobs, your hands. And then they'll mm-hmm. let go. 
And then I take my hands away and they wiggle and kick their feet or like they'll make some movement. Then I go back and there'll be maybe another twist. And some pe- people will say when you touch them, oh, yeah, that's the right place. Poke harder there or don't poke harder there. Or... So there's a lesson to just listen with your hands and fingers to the sensation or the electromagnetic feeling. You can also listen with your ears like the sigh. Or your eyes, just watching their body, seeing if they're flexing their feet, because that's usually a pain sign. Or the smell off their body. I don't know if we talk enough about smell, but, you know, the the body can smell in different ways. It can smell acid. It can, it can yeah, smell. Yeah, Verna, can you, okay, I've never heard anyone talk too much about that, but sometimes I smell something and it's uh, maybe when my... I'm doing a certain thing. Am I crazy or is there like, can it, can it change real time as you work with someone? Cause it doesn't make sense to me. Uh-huh. Uh, yes. The answer is uh, yes, that can happen. Often they'll be releasing something. Uh, we could theorize about it. Maybe you're touching certain acupuncture points. Like maybe there's a something, but besides that, if the uh, pri- are we changing the priorities in the body? So let's say you've been doing fairly gentle hands-on occipital or rubbing somebody's belly or whatever you're doing, and you kind of sense an acrid smell or you sense a nice happy baby smell. You know how babies, except for their poo, smell so yummy. Yeah. And you smell that. And you just try and surreptitiously just look at them, look at their face. Often their eyes are closed. And um, every situation, you're going to have a different idea about what that is or why that is. But usually it's letting go of something that is, has a toxicity rate in it aromatically, just like essential oils can have therapeutic. And also... Um, uh, the, it, it, the body reprioritizes. It can let go of that now. It doesn't need to. It, it, um, what's the next thing in line? So here's a thing I might have said before. If you have a heart attack and break your leg at the same moment, your leg will not hurt. Because the heart's more important. Mm-hmm. So heart, eyes, brain are the most important so if i throw you naked into a freezing snowbank your body the blood goes to those three places top priority might your feet freeze and fall off yeah but you'll still be alive Mm -hmm. but if your heart's gone your head's gone eyes part of the brain you're gone so what's the next priority And, and um i've experienced this personally and people say Now another thing has happened. I say, good, good. It's changing. (laughs) That thing's work. That thing's working better. And now we can get on to the next thing. And they go, oh. So people come in with a left lower sacroiliac jam, and it's like, oh, I fell on that thirty years ago down some steps, and it's got a wad of double bubble gum on it. It's got so much scar tissue. And you work on that and work on that, and they're walking fine. The next time they come, now my right side isn't working. Very accusatorily. Because I said, oh, do you think it's a bad hip? What do you mean? I said, well, it's just doing what's next. It's mm-hmm. showing us where to go. Mm-hmm. It says, okay, is now it, I'm important. Yeah, is it like, what, are we born? And then we heal and heal and heal and heal different layers and stuff. And then it, then we're done. Is that, is, It seems like there's never, it's never ending. And I, I feel like that's a very, our very Western sort of... Uh, what if you want to call it like um, a kind of masculine perspective of health is you just fix something it's done now you're good and but really it's like it's ongoing process right it's an ongoing process yes it's like teething just because the baby's screaming you don't presume you have to annihilate teeth from their body because you know experientially that they're going to need that to chew food mm-hmm and every, there is a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual part to anything that's happening, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And uh, do I always know what it is? No. 
God is not tattooed to any part of my body. No, <laughs> but I do know that there, there is um, something in the experience of it that, that is unwinding and helping. And even if it looks very horrible, um, you can help people um, learn how to deal, manage, evolve through um, the experience. Do you know Byron Katie's work, Loving What Is? No. That's B-Y-R-O-N, last name, K-A-T-I-E. She wrote a book called Loving What Is. And, I, and she has a great website and and pe- with consent of people shows her work interviewing. So she was talking to a man who had a facial carcinoma and he lost part of the face and he had his tongue and he had both maybe lost one eye. Anyways, she said, um, he said, I just wish I never had cancer. And she, this is really interesting therapy. She, he, she said, uh, is that true? Is it really true? What has happened to you since you had that cancer and who you met and all these things? He said, well, I met the love of my life and I'm with her now. Mm-hmm. And all the things he learned, she said, so it is true you had cancer and that is really difficult. But to deny your life since then, to say it's horrible, you met the love of your life. How many people get to do that? Mm-hmm. And it isn't, she's not bossy, like you should know better or aren't you thankful? It's just really interesting work. And she has four big questions, but the last two are, if you're thinking, oh, I wish I, and uh, something, you just don't like something. How do you feel when you think that thought? And the best one is, who would you be without that thought in your life? Not suppressed, but what if it wasn't the one of the things that was burdening you? So who knows what's really going on when we incarnate and live a life, but but there are many, many things to learn about. Doesn't mean we all have to cut our legs off and roll around, but you know, I I think there are ways to help people with their suffering, not to deny it, not to pretend you're going to make it go away, but to be there right there with them mm-hmm. and, and to do active listening and, and to uh, say, this really hurts. And, and then I sometimes tell them a story, like a story, well, what's happening right now in your leg that has two plates and 16 screws um, and your ballerina, like whatever it is, this is what's happening and I might sneeze in a moment. And this is what's happening. And uh, your body's making bone. And then I talk to them about what that actually is like. Like I, like they. One big thing is we don't know what's going on, especially in the milieu that we're living in right now. <laughs> but, yeah. but people don't know what's going on in their bodies because when allopathic medicine came, as you said, oh, we just have to fix this, fix this. If it doesn't work, you can just cut it off and continue on. Fix this, fix this. But the body actually knows how to grow hair and babies and toenails and filter in your kidneys so that you pee out mm-hmm. what you don't need. And whew, and I don't know how to do that in my, from my mind. I don't know how to do that. I mean, I can read about it, but really, I don't know how to do that. It must be part of a lot of naturopaths. Like we don't maybe talk about, but we have kind of a reverence for the, for the, kind of wonder and amazement come back to what we said earlier just like a, there's like a wonder and amazement that comes with viewing what, observing and, and working with what the body already does yeah so listening 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 with your smell and your ears and your eyes listening with all your perceptions and sometimes you'll touch a person's body and what you experience in your sensing of your fingers can be startling i think i've never felt anything like that before um and uh and you might not know for days or years what it was that you felt so you felt it the next six times and i feel crazy uh when i feel something sometimes because uh this is why i want to talk about the language and how like we when you first start doing touch it's like you're a toddler or whatever you don't have all the syntax and and all the different ways of saying things and I, that's kind of how i feel sometimes with, with learning the touch right. and 
And one time I, I felt someone, what I thought was their adrenal gland. It was very strange. I don't know. How, I don't, I'm very rational. I don't know how to explain it. But when I, uh, when I tried to uh, engage, I, I say I tried to communicate with the organ with my hand. Um, I felt like a gelatinous, like a jelly sort of feeling with not like the hardness of the kidney. And I was like, I think that's the kidney, but I did feel kind of crazy. I don't know how crazy, but like, how do you know what you're feeling? It's difficult, right? It is. And sometimes you'll very gently, apart from a pregnancy, which the baby will often push right back at you, but sometimes you'll be in a piece of tissue and you'll think, whoa and I was not, if i know the patient room i said did you feel that they go yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like it's it's pushing is it pushing back or is it reaching out that's the mm-hmm. funny question mm-hmm. you know? um every and everybody has their own normal like people have different size shapes of stomach the way their lymph drains is different the actual texture of their skin it it, it can be very 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 individual Mm -hmm. so there's like words like swampy brittle armored flaccid energetic non-energetic restricted unencumbered contiguous those are all kinds of feelings and some people have never experienced continuity and contiguousness in their bodies but i've i've touched um often people who are musical or uh, well cared for, like really good athletes, you touch their body and it's a whole piece, mm-hmm. you know, and they've had that experience. They've what do you, experience. what do you, what do you think is uh, happening when you kind of feel like electricity? Cause some, sometimes I, I feel like it's like I touched a, a low voltage battery. Yeah. It's almost like a, and it's, what, what do you think is going on there? I always think I should maybe back off a little bit, but what do you, what do you think is going on when you feel that sort of electric buzz? Mm-hmm. Well, it could be lymph moving. Uh, it could be the fascia itself re-equilibrating. Yep. Kind of, oh, you did something to their foot and now their jaw can then do something else. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't make sense intellectually with the way anatomy is taught, but anything can cause anything. I mm-hmm. knew that. And Mm -hmm. I don't even think I quite know what that means, but, but nothing, I would say almost, I can't, I haven't think of anything that surprised me lately, but I think could that knee replacement affected their eyeball to degenerate so fast after the surgery? I'll, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on board and say yes, right away. I've, even in my little experience, I've seen some bizarre connections that you just, you can't predict. Yeah, and that's why yeah. touch, and that's what touch does, that yeah. the mind can't do. You go in and you you start thinking right away. You'll miss something that the body yeah. has has integrated somehow. Yeah, yeah. So I want to talk about a little more about what you brought up. Um, feeling through touch, the energy or vibrations within the client's tissue. So what does feeling an energy mean versus being an energy? So if you come upon the scene of an accident or an incident versus being in the accident or incident. So when you come upon the scene of the crime and you put your hands on it, you're feeling the energy of it, but you're not being the energy of it, Mm -hmm. which is important to recognize because We have to, as practitioners, develop energetic boundaries. (laughs) So I'll tell you a story about me. And I don't know if I told this one about what happened after 9-11. 9-11, September. So I was, I came home. It was a Friday night. I thought, I am so tired. It was a weird week. 9-11 happened. No, it was two weeks after because it took me two weeks to figure out so I sat down, I just got really quiet in this chair. I sit and look out at my little garden and I just waited because I thought I've got to relax enough so I can figure out what it is I'm feeling. And the thing I was feeling was the mass consciousness, energetic response to 9-11. But I had no reference point for it in observing my energy field. 
because it was the first that had never happened before in my life. And as soon as I figured that out and trying to just, you know, clear, you know, kind of clear it or say, oh, that's a thing. That's that energy. I could, I had, I could get my boundary reestablished. But I, at first I didn't know what it was because it was like stealth fog, Mm -hmm. but I'd never seen it before. So I didn't know it was stealth fog. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And I think COVID has some of that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different thing entirely. But so you can touch somebody or touch them nearly. What's the difference when you feel a very healthy, vibrant person or a gravely ill person? So the vibrant person, they're there, the life force is clear, clean, and dynamic. But the person near death their force is often really undefined. It's not clear. It could be swampy, but there's no, there's no dynamic in it. That's okay. They're, they're leaving their body. That's whatever it is. But it, there is a difference of when you, when you put your hands on someone and you feel different things. But, you know, it's not over till it's over, so don't presume they're going to die. I mean, you have to, of course, not impose your presumptions on a situation because you're not in charge of that (laughs) uh sometimes if you've had a long-term client for decades and decades and you know how kind of how they feel if they feel out of phase with themselves and there's a stress something's happened and uh sometimes i'll bring it up and sometimes if i know them really well and they haven't told me I kind of wait till they tell me because they, they'll get to it if I just hold space for it. And the body helps you get there. Yeah. Yeah. Just to touch them, bring them back Mm -hmm. to themselves. And, um, and often that involves the skull or the sacrum, just pumping the sacrum or the belly, holding the skull, just holding holding the sacrum and the skull at the same time to either side um, and listening, listening to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's all kinds of uh, different touch methods. Um, gentle for the touch. naturopaths, I want I wanted to say something for any naturopath listening. You, you say, and we said it before, but I think because we're talking about touch, mm-hmm. it makes sense to talk about it is that you said as a, any kind of clinician, you, you think that you should have a touch therapy that fits your uh, curiosity or your interests or whatever, right? Yes, yes. So some people would never want to administer high velocity adjusting. Fine. Some people uh, just want to do that. Fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are so many ways to work and there are so many kind of methods. Um, the first thing I would do is encourage you to touch, just to feel the spine or the hand and just move it around. And you'll think, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you don't not know what you're doing. I mean, you're not going to rip their arm off, you know, and you begin and, and you observe them and you watch their face. They say, well, they say it isn't broken. And you know how to examine somebody for a broken bone, you know, because sometimes it's missed and you say, okay, sometimes little fractures don't show up right away. Has it been a week? Go back and get it re-x-rayed or like whatever, you know, but then there are things you can do. You can learn to kinesio tape something that's hurt. And that's really, I love kinesio taping. It's fun. It works well. How does it work? The actual tape. I, I've used it. I can't believe how well it works. I've used it for old, like when I had soccer injuries and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. I've wondered how it works. Like, is it neurological? Is it lymphatic? I don't really know. It's, it's yes. Just... All of those, all of those. Yeah. It, it sets the body's proprioceptors in the nerve and tissue and skin muscle so that it has support. Just like a hand on your back, Dave. It's mm. like, it's that kind of a thing. And the first time I saw it, I went, give me a break. But then I, I've used it a lot on myself yeah, and other people. 
And um, I said, they said, how's that going to do anything? I said, this is magic. <laughs> Jokingly. Mm-hmm. I said, now walk around. They go, oh, you don't have to lurch at every step. It doesn't mean you're not hurt, but you'll recover faster. Mm-hmm. You'll really recover faster. Vern, is there, is there any uh, really important stuff that we need to to get out in this episode on touch, which I think is, I think it's going to be one of, well, I'm biased like we all are, but I think this is one of the most important things to talk about. Is there any really important stuff you need to get out of the download? Remember you talk about downloading. Yes, yes. I'm just going through my notes here. Uh, I talked about that. Oh, just the different methods. Fingertips have the most energy for touch. I often think there's a whole other kind of meridian that comes out like right out the end of the finger. So some people who are really raw emotionally, physically, if I just gently touch them with my fingertips, because there's a lot of energy in my fingertips. They go, oh, I said, okay, just a minute. I'll just change, <laughs> change the position. And I put the pads of my fingers on. Mm-hmm. Or I'll use the palm of my hand, uh, just touch with that. Because there's a different level of energy. Have I ever measured it? No, not on a machine. But I do know that to be true. And then you can do wave-like pumping, or you can scoop like mashed potatoes. Like you can, especially in the belly, you scoop the outer edges around the pubic bone and the ribs. Just scoop everything towards the center. So the mashed potatoes aren't falling out of the bowl. It took me a long time to come up with that analogy. <laughs> then you can you can actually move things that you hook the tissue. You hook the tissue like uh, like I don't know what you hook it, and you move you move the whole thing versus poking it with your fingers. Mm-hmm. And there's points you can use that you might know as pub- might be um, acupuncture points, but you just, you think, I need to connect these two points. Do that. Skin rolling. And different pressures like eyeball pressure, tip of the nose pressure, you know, skull pressure. And the other thing is if you're going to be touching people, cut off your fingernails. That's very pragmatic. I know. Yeah. We're talking about be... spirituality and, and cutting your fingernails on. Yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. So it's nothing more annoying as a client. Anyway. Agreed. So um, what else do I want to tell you here? Uh, touch. There's a thing called growth hormone and children have it. That's why they grow. But in adults, it's a repair hormone. Like it repairs. So when you get a massage, all this growth hormone goes around and helps clean up and repair tissue. Uh, so that's that's a really important thing. And microcirculation. So we have in the nervous system, we have, well, in our circulatory system, we have 100,000 kilometers of capillaries in our body, which is 75% of the blood volume. Who knew? Interesting. And there's a vasomotor action from the nervous system, the automatic nervous sim- system, to create a little vasomotor action in the capillaries three to five times a minute. But in some people, it's three to five times every 10 minutes. That's not good. So you want your microcirculation system working well and moving and walking. Is it like a peristalsis kind of thing? Yes, but it's the the nervous, the the smooth muscle in the vessels is affected Mm -hmm. by the nervous system. So, and you know, the the blood doesn't move just because the heart pumps it because the heart, heart couldn't do that. It's, there's a whole vasomotor system that does it in the system, in the body. So that's, that's, that's really, really important and exciting when you think that the oxygen and nutrients get delivered better and the, um, the uh, carbon dioxide and the, and the debris comes out. You, you have to keep your vasomotor oh, for action. Sure. For sure. I, mean, I think that's why the osteopaths say the rule of the artery is supreme. That's, that's right. If you don't have blood flow, it's not going to end up pretty for whatever is yeah, that tissue. Yeah, yeah. 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 So there's a lot of things beyond palpation in the touch. And um, I started out as a chiropractor. I was only looking at bones. And then the belly appeared. And I went, oh, my God, what is this? How do I do this? You know? And after you've touched 10,000 bellies, you'll be really good at it. Mm-hmm. 
But just try, just feel, just see. Yeah, just learn the communication a little bit. I think you just start, and it's okay to not know uh, oh. everything that you're you're doing. I I still have that. Well, you, I mean, you're saying it. You're, you know, you've touched that many. And you're still learning. So yeah, I think as long as we're okay with not knowing everything, I think you know you get really precise and you get really specific information sometimes like when i'm having a good day i feel like that happens but even if i don't get that it's a form of communication with the patient there's going to be data that they didn't know was there or that i didn't know how to get otherwise that happens with touch there's connection there's all the electromagnetic stuff that you're talking about there's the uh the humanistic sort of side of things there's so many aspects to it so you're never wrong to do a little bit of uh, touch if it's, you know, allowed and wanted. And I think that's really key for people to understand. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to, but you're going to get something good happen no matter what. And get therapeutic touch done for yourself. Just went to the osteopath this week, Verna. So nice. I'm doing it. Yeah. That's nice. So the other thing as I'm leaving you with is you can just help the person breathe by holding your hand on their low mid back and on their belly and say, just go breathe to where my hands are. And then put the hands on the side ribs. Just breathe it into that. Just breathe there. Mm -hmm. That's all you did for 20 minutes. They'd feel fabulous. Mm -hmm. And if you want to help a child, child with asthma, you don't have to tell them to breathe where your hands are. You just put your hands on them and they breathe where your hands are. So are we at that are we at that point then, Verna, where we give you one last chance to leave leave our listeners with your your most important sort of concept that you want everyone to to get from today? Well, my second to last is when in doubt, follow <laughs> the breath. Follow the breath. Mm-hmm. And um touch yourself. You know, do skin brushing or just rubbing your hands or rubbing your feet. Hum. And um, skin is a miraculous thing. It's the bag we live in, you know. It's like really quite something. It's a miracle. Miracle. Get in touch with touch, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very good, David. Get in touch with touch. Very good. You get the... Ding, I'm not ding. stealing. I'm not stealing your thunder. This is Verna's thunder. <laughs> uh, okay, I think that's a. I think that's a beautiful way yeah. to end. Then get in touch with touch, and um, I, I think that's yeah. I think that's a wonderful way to end. So, um, we'll, we'll leave it at that then. For, yeah. Yeah. For this week's episode of that naturopathic podcast again, uh, with Dr. Verna Hunt, the OG DC ND. Thank you so much, Verna. We'll talk again next yeah. week. So the next week, we're going to talk about how can you improve your health resiliency at any age and stage in life? Okay, that's the topic for next week, then. We'll see you then. Ciao.